Hello and welcome to the program. I am Deji Badimasi. Thank you very much for joining us once again. Today on the program, we're looking at the APC. That's what we're actually starting with, the All Progressives Congress. It's, it's not a good time at all for the APC. I'm, I'm talking about the election now that took place in the Kitty State, June the 21st. No one, nobody ever expected that the APC was going to lose that election, but that's exactly what happened. The APC lost it. So come October this year, we're going to have the PDP government back in Ikiri State. And uh, well, for the PDP, it believes it's just the beginning of probably what you want to call good things to come for the party. Of course, we have elections coming up, governorship elections now coming up in Oshun State, and the PDP says it is more than prepared to take Oshun State and that uh, it's just going to be a matter of time. Maybe by 2015, it's going to just <laughs> roll over the entire southwest mm -hmm. of the country. Of course, the PDP, I mean, I expect the APC to be very much worried. And um, one of the reasons why the APC should be worried is just because what happened in Ikiti State was not something anyone ever expected at all. And uh, it did happen. Don't forget, in Anambra State, the party lost the governorship election there as well. A lot of people had expected the party to do well. Surprisingly, the party came third in that election in Anambra State. And of course, it lost that senatorial by-election in a Delta Central Senatorial District. And, um, well, it's just been like a losing streak for the party. And some people say, well, the party has got to halt this. Well, joining me on the program to talk about uh, some of the problems of the APC and, of course, why uh, the party lost that election in Ikiti State is uh, Mr. Ni Akinshiju, who is uh, uh, he's actually the chairman of the New Lagos Movement. Now, let me just say something about the New Lagos Movement. It's actually a group, well, you want to call them a pressure group, but this group has actually been protesting and demanding internal democracy in the APC in Lagos State. The party, I mean, the group says the last congresses conducted by the party was not free and fair and that, uh, you know, people were actually selected. And that's what Mr. Akinshiju would also be talking about. Mr. Akinshiju, thank you very much for coming on the program. My pleasure, dear. Um, uh, t tell us, um, you've been protesting now for, for quite a while, yeah. ever since the Congresses were concluded. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what exactly are your grievances? Yeah, well, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's an ongoing thing. And of course, it also has its uh, roots in the legacy party, ACN, in terms of tradition and culture and the uh, outlook too. Um, for my group, the New Lagos Movement, um, we are clearly focused on an ideal environment for the thriving and flourishing of democracy. And um, as exposed individuals, and I'm talking about professionals here, we believe that the, the average Nigerian professional is so distant from the political environment because, again, the political environment is so pruned to so much manipulation. So your group is, is, a, prof is, is a group of professionals? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and we think there's a need to get more professionals into, into the political environment. Uh, more than that, for, for democracy to thrive, because that, that is the ultimate for everybody, you know, for, political, for democracy to thrive, there is a need for a clear space, an open space for everybody to play in, to interact with, and to also know what exactly are the undercurrents for any decisions that are made. Okay. You know? So we, we decided that, okay, let us come together. Some of us are coming from purely a social democratic background. And therefore, we could not compromise some of the things that we see in the environment, either with the PDP or with some of our friends and politics that call themselves progressives too. But with the coming of the All Progressive Congress, we thought that something good is happening. And we act, some, of us, some of us are still eternally grateful to Ashwaju uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu for because we know that he's the chief facilitator of the APC in Nigeria today. And because you now have a word that actually defines what we have, you know, what our desires represent, we feel that let us go into the All Progressive Congress because it represents our values and ideological orientation. Okay, the best. and then you went in. And we went in. And um, the first Congress came, the World Congresses. 
because we demanded even before the the world congresses were conducted we demanded that this should be by open open election let everybody come onto the field uh, present your your aspirants and let let the people decide and fortunately the national the national uh, sent, I mean, the national drew up a regulation for the electoral guideline, and they agreed that yes, there's going to be uh, something like that, and we, we we applauded the national. But at the level of the local government, you start saying things that had to do with manipulations of who emerged somewhere, where winners became losers, and losers became winners. And we said we may not have direct interest in those places, but we are saying it is wrong. Then, secondly, some of our members actually intended to contest. And all of a sudden, we started hearing that certain posts had been zoned to, to a certain part but, of... But the you should have understood that there's zoning policy in the party anyway, whether or not you like it. So maybe it's just because you, you're very fresh, you're coming in, you know, for the first time, you, you just didn't know some of those things. Mm, but the truth is that our constitution, neither our constitution nor the electoral guidelines speaks to zoning. Well, you should understand that uh, politics in this country, I mean, what the constitution says is not actually what is what is uh, very important. It's unfortunate that then. It's the expedient that is actually It done. is unfortunate. It's quite unfortunate. Because I mean. ideal is ideal. You, if you are going to go into a game, you must know the rules. And the rules cannot be subjected to issues in expediency. It is clear, once the, paper, once the documents, the constitution or the regulatory uh, document states, this, there, is no, there is no issue in, in zoning, there is no issue in certain qualification, and we all know that in a democracy, anybody that is involved in that field cannot be qualified. That's what democracy tells us. Once, once you have attained do, do you adult think the, coverage, the, do you think the leadership of the party may have targeted your group or may have decided to do this just because what it, it feels you people are coming in, you, no, you're no. just fresh members, no, no. and um, it's it's it might just be necessary or politically expedient to. Uh, probably compensate the old members who had been there and made all the sacrifices. No, no, no. We were not targeted. We were not targeted at all. I can I, that I know. But again, if it's a tradition and the tradition is wrong, it is also appropriate for some people to stand and say, "Look, this tradition is wrong. Let us do things that is done properly." So, exa what what exactly are, are your demands now? The demands is that whoever emerges as leader at whatever level in the party, you must emerge through a transparently conducted open primaries. You must also have your eyes at the governorship primaries. You would want to see that uh, you, you would want to see that to be very transparent, especially in Lagos State where not quite long ago we had this issue of uh, the Oba of Lagos coming out to endorse uh, a particular candidate and of course that generated uh, a furore in public. The, the Oba of Lagos can, can endorse anybody. He's, well, I, I don't think he's a member of the party but as, um, as, as an outstanding responsible citizen of the state, he has a right to endorse anybody. Anybody has a right to endorse any aspirant in a demo democratic it, it's environment. It's just that some endorsements carry more political course, implications and weight. It is them. good. It is good. We don't have any problem with it. But what we are saying is if you endorse somebody, another, other people also have their right to endorse other people. Do not limit the powers and the, the, the privileges of other people to also endorse. Do, do you think it will be a problem so a, a problem now for your party when it comes to choosing the governorship candidate because a lot of people are saying well there might be problems like we had in 2000 and there, there uh, would be uh, there would be that that we know and that's why we are saying let everybody be involved in the process of who emerges as the governor of uh, the governorship candidate what of kind the of party. problems are you for but it's not it's not even about the governor alone it's yeah of course to, i mean it, it runs it across comes, it runs yeah, across through for, the grassroots yeah, the council lord chairman it, exactly. reps it's it's important that every member of the party feel belonged you know and that they are responsible for whoever emerges either they are aspirants in the beginning is the loser or the winner the issues in democracy is that once someone emerges everybody in the party comes together. There's a convergence of sentiments at and, that point. And you would want this not just for Lagos State, but for, for all the all states. For all the I mean, states. Exactly. Like you were saying, God forbid PDP takes over Lagos State. God forbid PDP, PDP takes do, over Lagos State. Do you think there's states. a chance the PDP could take over Lagos State? I if don't. the APC continues to have this internal bickering. Yeah, we are scared. We, we, some of us are scared because and that's why we are raising issues now. We interact with the people, and we know that people are getting tired of 
some group of, I mean, few people determining who becomes the candidate of the party at whatever level. And I'm, talk, I'm not talking about the governorship uh, candidates alone. The, the, the people wants to feel responsible. It is also inappropriate to, 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 at any point in time, define who the people should follow without their input into that decision. So what that means is that there, there will be the layback approach to supporting the candidates, I, especially I, I, during I campaign. I guess you're, you're making this because you're, you're professionals, because, I mean, before now, you know, it's whatever the leadership at the top says that everybody follows, and part of that has been blamed for a, a lack of sophisticated membership. Thank so you. with you coming in now, maybe that's why things are changing, and you might be a threat to, 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 to the present arrangement, I mean, leadership arrangement no, we are in, not threat. in the we party. Are, we are no threat to anybody. We are no threat to the leadership. We are not interested in becoming leaders, in aspiring to become leaders of the party. What we are, we are, what we are interested in is the enunciation of an environment that talks to democratic values. And that's the minimum you can determine. Let's, de de let's turn for. our attention very well. I, I, I quite appreciate what uh, you're saying, and it, it, it's, it's quite correct. Let's turn our attention to Ikiri State. Mm. Uh, you know, quite quite a bad one for your party. Why do you think your party performed so woefully in that state? I mean, for an incumbent governor to lose, no one had ever, no one ever saw that coming. Yes, no one. It's, it's very it's very strange in Nigeria, especially in this in this area. But it's not the first time we um, those of us with that inclination uh, lost. Uh, Adebayo, near Adebayo, Governor Levy, near Adebayo, lost, lost to Fayoshi, you know, in 2003 election. Um, I think in the, in the particular election of Ekiti State, uh, a major issue is um, the unity and the strength of the party, 2007-2014. Uh, people are not looking okay. back, you know, because in 2007, um, Governor Fayemi emerged as governor, uh, the, the flag bearer of the then AC, AC Action Congress. And um, a lot of dramatic things were at, at play. And you saw so many notable players in the party, in the kitty, moving out of uh, the party and joining the PDP. Of course, AC won the election at the court eventually, because uh, if we have to be truthful, uh, from the result declared PDP won. But the truth of the matter is the platform had become weakened at that point in time. Oh, really? And you saw actors and players who were very active in the party becoming active in opposition. So it does mean that they are transferring their strength from the, the, the party to the opposition. A clear case in point, Honorable uh, Bami Deli. Well, Opoyemi is a recent one. Senator Arisha is one. Dayo Adeye is one, is another. And you have a low legions of that, so many of them. Now, a party is about the people and about the sentiments. Sometimes the sentiments is that play and it triumphs over the people. Sometimes it's the people. Now, the sentiments in 2007 was clear. It was the sentiments that supported AC and the change from the PDP government. So whoever was presented for the party at that point in time, for the AC at that point in time, is likely to enjoy the sentiments of the people. Now, by, the, by 2014, so many factors that used to belong in the AC are now, they now belong in PDP. They've, they've started working against AC, uh, B -B -B -A APC. APC with the same inclination with AC is a continuation of uh, the, the Action Congress. Now, what you also need to know is that when someone that belongs in your house decides to start throwing, at, start, start throwing stones Stone. in the house, it weakens the foundation of the house. And that is what we have. Forget about the sentiments of uh, stomach infrastructure and all that. Uh, those, those ones are just sent. I mean, I don't want to put those. Are, they are just afterthoughts. Well, Mr. Akinshiju, thank you very much for coming on the program, and thank, thank you very much for your contributions. My pleasure. We'll take a short break now. When we come back, we'll be looking at something else, completely different from politics. Stay with us. Don't go away. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast; it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as the savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we break them down. 
explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. All right, welcome back. As I told you earlier, we are doing something completely different. We have uh, the Nigerian wonder kid, Zuriel Oduoli, back here in the studio. If you remember some time ago, we spoke with her and, um, you know, we first met her when she was nine. She's now 11 and she's still doing some very amazing work. Zuriel, thank you very much for coming back again to TV360. Thank you for having me. Yeah, um, I know you've been very busy lately and uh, of course you were in Oshun State and uh, you presented an award to the governor of Oshun State. Tell us about that award. What, what exactly was it about? Well, the award was for the most innovative governor supporting education in Nigeria. And what it is, is I have some friends who created the Girl Rising documentary, and I also have some friends from the United Nations Foundation, and also some volunteers who do a lot of research to find out who will be best to give the award to for each particular topic. Now, the topic was, of course, the most innovative governor supporting education in Nigeria. And so for that, we chose Governor Rauf Alek Bishola of Oshun State. And I'm surprised that you pronounce the name so very well. Now, while you were in Oshun State, you, you visited some schools. I mean, we saw you. We're going to see the picture very shortly. We saw you, I mean, visiting some schools. Tell us about the schools. What, what, what impression did you get now from visiting those schools? Well, when I see those schools, I think it could be anywhere in the United States, it could be in the UK, because the schools are very modern -y. And also what I like about it is that the governor is also providing O meals, which ensures that the children who go to these schools would have a chance to get meals every day. And I met some of the children in the schools, and they said they liked the improvement, seeing the new infrastructure development, and I think it's something really cool. And uh, did, did you speak with some of the, the, the students in the schools, I mean, the, the pupils? Well, there wasn't that many when I went to visit because um, two of them weren't finished yet. But I did, saw, I did see a couple of children, and when I talked to them about the project, you just see the expression on their faces. They're like smiling and grinning. You could tell they're really looking forward to it. And the infrastructure, I mean, the classrooms you saw, what, what's your impression of those classrooms? I mean, were they wonderful? They were indeed wonderful. I saw they had new desks, they had new chairs, they had, um, they had sometimes they had projectors there so that we had children be able to watch things while doing the, um, you know, that have to do with the schoolwork. And also when we were walking around, I saw that they built a new sports field. They also, that the children can get some exercise. And they also had new art classes and computer classes as well. Well, I saw they actually had about 48 computers where children in grades Eight, seven to eight, I believe, will be able to attend those classes. Oh, all right, let's very quickly now just take a look at um, you presenting the award to uh, Governor Rebbeshala and what you said uh, during that ceremony, and of course what uh, Governor Rebbeshala said in return. Let's take a listen and, and, and take a look at that. Sure. I, the Dream Up Speak Up Standard Project, are proud to present the award of the most innovative governor supporting education in Nigeria to Governor Raoul Rebbeshala. I was very, very happy to have a single recognition by no less personalities than international.
as a way of stimulating our children. to have high dreams and develop passion for their dreams so as to serve and to service get recognition. Well, I mean, we, Governor Rogba Shalade, I mean, speaking so glowingly of you, I mean, quite, quite wonderful. And uh, it, it's, a, it's so very wonderful that you could think of this idea and present, um, you know, an award to a, a, a governor. So do you intend to continue this or is this just a one-off? Well, I've already presented four awards. The first was to an African first lady who is doing a lot to support um, child education. And that went to the first lady of Tanzania, um, first lady Salma Kikwete. The second award I gave was to um, Minister Muriel Martin of Mauritius, and that was the award for a gender minister who was supporting child education also. And then the last two I did, which was at Ocean State, I awarded it to Governor Rauf Alec Bishola for the most innovative governor supporting education um, in Nigeria. And the second one was the most dynamic commission of education in oh. Nigeria. And that went to Madam Titi Laoye. Tomorrow. Who is, of course, the deputy governor of that state, and she's in charge of education, no doubt. And the, the whole idea is, pro I'm very sure the whole idea is to encourage, um, you know, leaders to continue to do more for, um, you know, for education, especially the education of the girl child, right? Yes, sir, that is correct. All right. Now, you, you were in Brazil. I mean, let's talk about your new project. Um, you have this project that is running, the Dream of Speak Up Stand Up com, uh, project, and now you have another one. That's the hashtag uh, Follow the Ball for Education campaign uh, project. T tell us about this new project. Well, what it is, I'm sure as you all know, that the whole world is focused on football now because of the World Cup. Yeah, of course, and, yeah. and that's the reason you went to Brazil, but go on. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking these two footballs to six countries across three continents to get people talking about girls' education. And so I've been able to meet with people from over 20 nationalities uh, in Brazil who have signed the ball. And from this, I'm going to create a documentary to bring even more awareness to the rest of the world on why all children, especially the girls, should have a chance to get an education. Um, t tell us about the signing of the... How, how did people receive you in Brazil? Because, I mean, we saw you on the streets of Brazil. We saw people signing the ball. What, what's the kind of reception you got in Brazil? Well, when it's World Cup time, it's almost like everyone has the exact same address. Everyone's, everyone's family when it comes to the World Cup. And so they were glad to sign the ball. We took pictures. And they also wanted to know um, what pro the project, more about the projects I'm doing. And so what I did was I explained to them. And then they wanted to know what more they could do to help the um, area of child education. I mean, it, it's good that you, your campaign is coming at a time when uh, the, Nigeria is still looking for over 200 girls who were taken away from a school in Chibok. Um, what are your thoughts now about those girls who were kidnapped in Chibok? Well, I think it's really sad what has happened because me, as an everyday old girl, I can't imagine being taken away to some strange place by some strange people. But I, I am hoping that the government will be able to find the girls and bring them home safely. And. Um, what will be your final word now about your campaign? Just tell us, because we, we have to close now. Tell us, what will be your final word about this campaign? I mean, the new project that you've, you, you, you've started now, the Follow the Ball for Education project. Well, you can find out more about my project on my website, dreamupspeakupstandup.com, and you can also follow on Twitter and Facebook. And w where next are you going to? You've, you've gone to Brazil, you've come to Nigeria, so where next? Well, like I mentioned, six, Af six countries, so now I've done it in the U.S., Brazil, Ethiopia, and now Nigeria. Now the next two countries would be South Africa and Mauritius. Tell us, uh, I, I just have to ask you this before you go, your dream about becoming the President of the United States, and yes, uh, is it still on? It is, sir. That hasn't changed yet. It hasn't changed? No, sir. And you also want to be an athlete when you grow up? Yes, sir. Have, have you started practicing? Yes, sir. I have taxi for track. Yes, sir. Oh, really? Yes, sir. Okay, maybe I'll take you up uh, 
the next time you come. By then, I guess you'll be bigger. Um, I, so yes, <laughs> well, thank you very much, Zuriel, for coming on the program, and we wish you all the best of luck in your new project. Well done. Thank you for having me. I was glad to be here. Yeah, so that's it on the program. If you want to watch it again, it's just so simple. All you do is go to our website, and uh, of course, that website is tv360nigeria.com. Just look out for uh, the category DG360. You can also watch us on YouTube by subscribing to our YouTube channel. It's www.youtube.com forward slash tv360. Nigeria. You could follow us also on Google Plus at TV360 Nigeria or just like us on Facebook. The address is facebook.com forward slash TV360 online. You can also follow us on Twitter. Our handle is at TV360 online. We well, thank you very much for watching once again. We're back again next week. See you then.